quick revision video on phenols and phenol. So some essentials. Phenols are a class of aromatic compound with a hydroxyl group directly bonded to a benzene ring. The simplest member of the phenols is of course phenol itself, C6H5OH. So there's three phenols there. You can see the OH group directly bonded to the benzene ring. So the first one, the one on the left, is phenol itself. The middle one is 4-hydroxybenzoic acid. And the one on the right is 3-nitrophenol. So the next thing we'll look at is the acidic nature of phenols. So phenol is slightly soluble in water and partially dissociates. So therefore, phenols are weak acids. So we can show that with this dissociation or equilibrium. So you can see that the H on the OH group uh, is dissociated, donated into the solution as an H plus ion. And we're left with this ion here, which is called the phenoxide ion. So compared to other organic compounds, phenol is more acidic than ethanol, but it's less acidic than carboxylic acids. So because of that, ethanol won't react with strong or weak bases. So a strong base such as sodium hydroxide or a weak base such as sodium carbonate. Phenols will react with strong bases such as sodium hydroxide. You're going to see that on the next slide. But it won't react with weak bases such as sodium carbonate. So if you put sodium carbonate in with a phenol, you would not see effervescence. And carboxylic acids will react with both types of bases, strong and weak. So if you put sodium carbonate in with a carboxylic acid, you would see effervescence. So if we move on to the reactions of phenols now, so the first one we'll look at is with sodium hydroxide, so that's a strong base. So phenol reacts with sodium hydroxide to form a salt and water, because essentially it's just an acid plus base reaction and that's obviously a neutralization reaction. So two types of equation here. So this sort of um, pictorial representation of phenol. So phenol, sodium hydroxide, we're gonna get this salt here. This is sodium phenoxide. So the H plus ion of this acid, phenol in this case, is being replaced by a sodium ion. And obviously water is the other product. And that's the other way you could write it. Now, sometimes you see charges shown, so that's what they would look like there. The important thing that you mustn't do is put a line between the O and the Na, because then you're saying that there's a covalent bond between them, and there isn't. This is an ionic substance. Next reaction we'll look at is the reaction with bromine. So phenol reacts with aqueous bromine in an electrophilic substitution reaction, to form a white precipitate of 246-tribromophenol and hydrogen bromide. So the equation for that looks like that. And the observations, the bromine's decolorized and we get a white precipitate of 246-tribromophenol. It's just worth noting at this point, if we were reacting um, benzene with bromine, we would need a halogen carrier catalyst to get the reaction to take place. And we'd only get mono substitution, we wouldn't get tri substitution. And the final reaction of phenol we're gonna look at is the reaction with nitric acid. Phenol reacts with dilute nitric acid at room temperature to form a mixture of two nitrophenol and four nitrophenol. So the equation for that, you can write like this. So this is the 2-nitrophenol product, and this is the 4-nitrophenol product. And that's down to the fact that the OH group is a 2,4 directing group. Again, it's worth making a comparison with benzene. So when benzene reacts with nitric acid, the nitric acid needs to be concentrated. We need a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst, and we need a temperature of between 50 and 55 degrees C. And notice this reaction with phenol reacts at room temperature. So you can see this reaction and the previous reaction is showing that phenol or phenols are more reactive than benzene. So we'll just explain that. 
So the reason for the increased reactivity of phenol is due to the presence of a lone pair of electrons in the oxygen p orbital of the hydroxyl group. So if we show that as a diagram, we can do something like this. So I'll just explain that. So we've got six pi electrons in the benzene ring, and we've obviously got two electrons in this p orbital of the O of the OH group. And what happens is the p orbital delocalizes into the pi electron cloud and it forms this sort of funny shaped orbital here and we've now got eight electrons in the delocalized ring of pi electrons which I always abbreviate to drop but obviously I wouldn't write that in the exam I would write that so I'll just get that in words now the lone pair of electrons in the oxygen p orbital of the hydroxyl group becomes delocalized into the delocalized ring of pi electrons of the benzene ring that's going to increase the electron density of the ring. So instead of just benzene on its own having six pi electrons, the phenol equivalent is eight now. So we've got more pi electrons in there. And so therefore, phenol is able to polarize or attract electrophiles more easily than benzene. And hence, it needs less um, severe conditions when it reacts.